Hey, my name is Scott Lydon, and you're watching Swifty. If you've written functions that take closures as parameters, sometimes you might have noticed that Swift's compiler requires you to write at escaping after your parameter name. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you why that is and what it means. You're probably thinking, why does Swift compiler require me to put this escaping keyword there? And what it does is it's a keyword you use whenever the parameter that you're passing in lasts until after uh, your function returns. So after Pokemon, uh, the function Pokemon returns, and we can see right here, so when it gets down to the end of the scope, because we don't have a return in here, so when it gets to the end of the scope, it's returning, and this is to signify that we need this completion to last until after it returns. And you might be thinking, how can, why does it think that this will be needed after this returns? It's, as you can see, it's written before the end of the scope. So we need it before it returns, right? But we don't. We actually do need it after. So the way this executes is first it hits line 9, 10, and I'm just going to put some breakpoints to give you. Um, give you an idea and I'm gonna to have to hit the breakpoints I'm gonna to have to play through the breakpoints really quick um, so all right let's do this so I'm gonna hit play and when it hits the breakpoints you notice it jumped down here I'm going to end the scope of the function before completion gets called because this is on a separate thread this here is on a separate thread. Um, of course, because we're because I'm talking and waiting so long, I might actually hit those breakpoints, but um, it's gonna go through this for loop a lot, and it looks like it's not even hitting it, but I think it's kind of hard to tell. It could be hitting it in between uh, my clicks. But, oh, here we are. Now we have a response from the server. So this is after this function uh, had returned. So that's why we need this parameter to list to live after this function is has returned. So that's basically what the escaping means. It, it tells the compiler, hey, when the scope of this function ends, this parameter is going to escape it. Basically, we're still going to need it. So don't deallocate it. Don't kill it. Don't take it out of memory because we still will need to use it. So that's why they use the at escaping. Another, another reason you might need the at escaping is let's say you have a property called equals, um, and it's gonna be, the property is gonna be uh, declared as type takes a Pokemon and returns void. And so let's say um, in the first line, we could comment this out and take out escaping, and it's going to shout at us. And I'm going to make this optional so that, or I'm just going to make it, yeah, I'm going to make it optional. Oh, this has to be a var. Okay, so it was mad at me because every property has to have an initial value. And at least a way to get an initial value when it's initialized. But as you can see, our initializer doesn't give this an initial value. So one little secret is that when you create an optional value, it automatically defaults to a value known as nil. However, in order for it to do that, you have to acknowledge that the value is going to be uh, changeable. And so that's why you do, why you have to do var. So I'm going to try to trigger it to ask me to put at escaping and all I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the completion to the property or I should call it prop just to differentiate it from property so I'm going to do prop equals completion and then it should yell at me to tell me I need at escaping assigning non escaping parameter completion to an an at escaping closure all right so it's giving me the suggestion and now we got to put at escaping because after this function scope uh, concludes, we will still have the value for prop. So that's why um, this completion needs to be at escaping. So I'm going to take it out and because we don't really need it. 
and I'm going to uncomment this and 